I challenged myself to create a semi-decent watercolor painting in my sketchbook using these kids watercolors. It wasn't at all easy, <laughs> but it was also fun. And so let's see how I did. I visited a local stationery store recently to restock on binder clips and some other packaging materials for the studio and saw some very basic watercolor kits in there and I asked the clerk to give me the cheapest and the worst possible set they've got and she looked at me all surprised and confused and then replied but they're all actually pretty good and I was like no no you don't understand I need the worst one and that's how I got this beauty 275 euros which is roughly three dollars and it had a brush included so let's unpack this and swatch some paint I included a black stripe on the left page of my sketchbook so that we can all check how transparent these are but let's be realistic if there is barely any pigment because pigments are not cheap then there has to be something that the paint is made of and the thing is usually not transparent. I call it a toothpaste. A dyed toothpaste. The reds actually surprised me. They were quite intense and all colors were obviously chalky and opaque. <music> First, I thought I won't be able to use this brush, but it was surprisingly soft, only the bristles were not the same length. And after adjusting that with scissors, the brush was fine. With the exception of the background, when I needed a larger flat brush, I painted the entire page with this tiny miracle. For the motif, I picked a reference photo and you can find it on my Pinterest board linked down below. And I picked the one that didn't have very intense coloring because that would be something I could not achieve with this set but the purpose of the challenge wasn't to create a gallery piece with a cheap set to prove my skills or anything rather to see how much my progress relies on high-end art materials which I am sort of starting to be a little spoiled on as more companies start to send me their beautiful products to review so I was just wondering how I would do with a really basic product this time around <music> Another thing I wanted to sort of prove is what I always recommend to beginners on a budget and that is to always put the watercolor paper first and paints last. My reasoning behind this is that watercolor paper is the body of your painting and it needs to fit into certain parameters to be able to pull off a successful watercolor painting simply because of the nature of water media. Anything that has less than 300 GSM and even some texture is really extremely tricky to work on with water and if a beginner buys good enough paper but very cheap watercolors usually is able to progress and even learn basics of the technique as we are still able to water down the paint and pull it across the paper but with cheap and low quality paper it's just frustration to no end and the worst thing is that everyone assumes that it's your skills paper needs to be able to withstand water first and then your watercoloring skills can be built not the other way around With that said, I was painting inside my Strathmore 400 series watercolor journal or a sketchbook if you will. This is not a cotton paper, it's cellulose or pulp, but it's still 300 GSM and cold pressed. The texture makes it much easier to control water. Still, the amount of watercolor hardships that I faced was significant. First of all, the paints did not flow at all. It behaved like a watered down gouache and formed a blotchy texture everywhere. I placed it. I kept painting over and over those areas that were supposed to have a nice clean wash which was simply not possible to achieve here. Luckily I don't mind some texture and graininess and that's how I approached the entire painting in the end. If you are attempting a similar challenge while going for a clean glazed look, uh, good luck to you. <laughs> Not even salt worked quite like it usually does, but I was able to get nice hard edges around those platters below the flowers. Probably the most annoying thing was that the palette kept drying incredibly fast no matter how much water I sprayed on those pans. I was unable to keep the paint at least a little bit moist, as if it was repelling the water or something. But I liked the steel grey that I was able to mix with the ultramarine blue and the flesh tone, including in this box. The 
flesh tone was a single color that I used the most throughout the entire piece. So does the quality of your paints influence the process and the final result? Sure it does. This painting took me twice the amount of time just because I was fighting with the blotchiness and streakiness of the paint and trying to repaint and cover mistakes. And when you look at the final illustration in the sketchbook and compare it with the rest of my pages, even someone who doesn't really paint could tell the difference. But not owning good enough paints is not the excuse to give up your practice. However, maybe you could try to get at least a decent watercolor paper. And this experiment took me back to the first year I started to play around with watercolor, which was 11 years ago already. And similar kids' paints were my daily companion. Of course, that I had no idea that there is something better out there and with nothing to compare them to, I was really having fun painting my first portrait with them. And I will show you in another video soon because I was looking for another challenge that I could tackle this summer. And my dear patrons suggested I repaint an old artwork of mine and that got me very excited to try. Another idea was to do the do this in your style challenge but currently I don't know any artists who host such a challenge. If you know then please let me know in the comments. I will have time on my vacation in August to try something I've never done before and so your suggestions are more than welcome. One last thing about the cheap watercolor palette to mention is that the opacity of the white paint surprised me. I thought this color will never be able to pull off the white highlights or even help me to make the white flowers stand out a little and it really did. I used absolutely nothing else to finish the artwork. Even those few drops of the white paint on top of her completely black hair stayed visible enough to help the overall texture. I don't think I will paint with this palette again though. It goes straight to the first kid that crosses the door of my studio and I hope they'll have fun with it. I certainly did. But it leaves me with about four pages left in my watercolor sketchbook now and I'm full of ideas on how to fill them. I was also sent few very interesting paint sets to test out so that's something to look forward in the upcoming videos. <music> To sum up this challenge, I learned that while I am quite used to using very good materials for my process, I do not depend on them quite as much as I thought, but the experiment made me appreciate them even more. Also, watercolors should always flow once you put them on a page and it is very noticeable when they just don't and stay where you place them, which reminds me more of a wash and takes away an important factor of excitement from the process, which is one of the main things that makes me love watercolor so much. Other than that, this was a fantastic challenge that I highly recommend to those of you that want to test out their watercolor skills. You're going to have fun and learn something about your process too. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye!